Hi, I'm Julianne Romanello, and I'm going to go over Sustainable Development Goal 9, Build Resilient Infrastructure, Promote Inclusive and Sustainable Industrialization, and Foster Innovation. Central to SDG 9 is the premise that higher technology industries are far more resilient in crises than their lower tech counterparts. Let's unpack the two main concepts in this premise. One, higher technology, and two, resilience. The high-tech or innovative industries envisioned in SDG 9 are those of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, or 4IR for short. In this 2016 article, the World Economic Forum, a partner of the UN, describes the 4IR as a technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live, work, and relate to one another. In its scale, scope, and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before. Moreover, it is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. So what specifically are the technologies that are to culminate in the merger of the physical, digital, and biological spheres? They are emerging technology breakthroughs in fields such as artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, nanotechnology, biotechnology, material science, energy storage, and quantum computing. Powered by billions of people connected by mobile devices, especially the data they generate, the 4IR promises a new world, one that is abuzz with self-driving cars and drones, AI virtual assistance with every aspect of life, algorithmic prediction and management of culture, new drugs and synthetic biology, and smart buildings everywhere. Indeed, the velocity, scope, and systems impact of the 4IR is disrupting almost every industry in every country and transforming entire systems of production, management, and governance. Now for the second concept in SDG 9, resilience. The 2020 UN report on helping build resilient societies defines resilience as the ability of individuals, households, communities, cities, institutions, systems, and societies to prevent, resist, absorb, adapt, respond, and recover positively, efficiently, and effectively when faced with a wide range of risks while maintaining an acceptable level of functioning without compromising long-term prospects for sustainable development peace and security, human rights, and well-being for all. What that wordy definition really boils down to is that resilience is a strategy to anticipate and to manage all risks through multiple layers of contingency plans. And resilience is facilitated through the 4IR networked system of sensors, information processing capacity, predictive analytics algorithms, and automated access controls which make it possible to simulate nearly all risks and to optimize resource usage, infrastructure operations, and human behavior in order to guarantee alignment with the 2030 agenda. As we see in the definition of resilience, the capacity is to be applied to individuals, to households, society as a whole, and everything in between. SDG 9 targets three development sectors for high-tech innovation and resilience. These are transportation or mobility systems, manufacturing, both the processes and the goods that they produce, and information and communications technologies, or ICT for short, which is the network that holds them all together. Let's look at SDG 9's vision for each of these sectors. The 2020 UN Interagency Report on Sustainable Transportation highlights the key role of innovative transportation systems for resilience and sustainable development. Sustainable development is the new international economic order established by UN resolution in 1974, elaborated in Agenda 21 and in the 2030 Agenda, 
And today it goes by the name of the Great Reset or the Build Back Better. The sustainable development agenda seeks to balance the risks and rewards of engaging in activities that have any effect whatsoever on the economy or on the environment. It's important to note the agenda's lens is global in scope and stretches infinitely into the future. To this end, the flows of all resources, natural, artificial, and human, must be monitored and managed so as to mitigate risk and increase resilience. It is through the 4IR digitalization of the transport sector, specifically through the incorporation of artificial intelligence and automated cognitive processes, that this level of global future-proof management is possible. Digitalization of transportation enables whole-scale regulation of global value chains, especially where goods and people may go and how they get there. The UN report situates intelligent transport systems within the context of a smart city, that is, a city in which the innovative infrastructure we find in the transportation, manufacturing, and ICT sectors are incorporated into every aspect of its functioning. Specifically, the collection of real-time data and automated identification systems, that's digital ID, are crucial. What this means is that entire processes of moving goods, services, and people is to be governed by a surveillance network that gathers data and optimizes outcomes for the goals of sustainable development. So if you wish to travel someplace your trip must coincide with the UN's economic and environmental agenda. If it doesn't, intelligent transport systems will trigger automatic access controls to ensure that the trip doesn't happen. SDG 9's second target sector is manufacturing. And this 2017 report presents a vision for manufacturing and industry in which, quote, the physical world of industrial production merges with the digital world of information technology to create a digitized and interconnected system of industrial production, unquote. For IR technologies, including augmented reality, blockchain ledgers, the internet of things, and so on, are to reset traditional manufacturing processes so that it too may be built back better as an intelligent, cyber physical system. The Smart Manufacturing Institute at UCLA, which is an industry association whose 100 plus members include academic institutions, government entities, and giant global corporations, including, for example, Microsoft, ExxonMobil, Rockwell Automation, Raytheon, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and many more, published a lengthy definition of smart manufacturing that you can read in full in this screenshot. But here's an excerpt. In smart manufacturing, resources and processes are integrated, monitored, and continuously evaluated with this sensing information, processing, modeling, predictive analytics, and workflow needed to automate routine actions and prescribe action. Organizations, people, and technology work in synergy via processes and technology-based solutions that are proactive and semi-autonomous, orchestrated and resilient, and sustainable. If we want to understand SDG 9's vision for industry, we need to ask how that synergy among organizations, people, and technology is to be achieved. One answer to that is wearable technologies. When SDG 9 speaks of infrastructure and industrial innovation, it encompasses not only hard physical assets and processes, but also the people who operate and maintain them. In this article on the Frito-Lay company, we read that data gathering intelligence sensors are finding their way onto the workers themselves enabling remote assistance via augmented reality headsets, measuring labor efficiency to develop pay-for-performance frameworks, and even monitoring the postures of employees with the goal of improving workplace ergonomics. And another path toward human 
technology synergy is through collaborative robots or cobots for short. These help maximize efficiency as well as reduce costs and waste. In this web article from A3, we read that leveraging the benefits of the next stage in automation evolution employs a more collaborative species of robot, a more skilled human workforce, and the data insights to turn creativity and intellect into ruthlessly efficient processes. Finally, SDG9 targets the information and communications or ICT sector. ICT is the backbone or foundational system of infrastructure and industry that qualifies as smart, intelligent, or cognitive, and is therefore able to ensure that development is sustainable and resilient. As we read in this 2016 UN report, the core characteristics of smart systems are that they are connected and that they generate data which may be used intelligently to ensure the optimal use of resources and improve performance. But what exactly is ICT and how does it make a sector or a city smart? We can look to Ericsson, the global telecom giant, which is a partner of the WEF and a longtime participant in the UN Global Compact and the UN Habitat Smart Cities Program, if we want to find out. To put it simply, ICT is the power to measure and manage all infrastructure, including man and machines and its operations. In 2022, Ericsson published a white paper entitled 6G Connecting a Cyber-Physical World that explains how 6G-powered ICT enables a digitalized and programmable world that includes the internet of senses, connected intelligent machines, cognitive networks, and so on. It's the 6G network that provides the limitless connectivity and data sharing capacity that is needed for the full synchronization of the physical and digital worlds. We read here that vast amounts of sensors embedded in the physical world send data to update the digital representation in real time. Actuators in the real world carry out commands from intelligent agents in the digital world. It becomes possible to track back and analyze events, observe and act in real time, as well as to simulate, predict, and program future actions. The Built Back Better world then is resilient because it is nothing short of a fully automated society that utilizes things like 4D maps of whole cities for detailed planning and control of all activities that occur within them. Nanotechnology, or miniature nodes measuring bodily functions, collect, process, manage, and communicate data about individual human beings. And a network sensor fabric controls automated vehicles on the ground and in the air. In the 6G-enabled automated society, our interactions with AI and intelligent machines and sensors aren't limited to our time on the clock. They will govern our personal and social interactions as well, tracking our lives through intelligent identity systems and optimizing the connected world to our personal preferences. These technologies also make it possible to track the entire life cycle of goods and resources on a global scale. This brings about a full circular resource economy, the one envisioned in the WEF's now infamous slogan, you'll own nothing and be happy. We saw earlier that the people who work in manufacturing will soon find that wearable technologies, robotic exoskeletons and cobots are workplace standards. But to clear up any doubt about the extent of SDG 9's vision for integrating 4IR technologies into our personal lives, Ericsson's report explains that, I quote, future services will require connectivity everywhere and in everything. Trillions of embeddable devices with trustworthy connections that are available all the time will form the internet of senses to govern our immersive experiences with the digital world. 
on-body devices such as smart gloves and skin sensors, and in-body devices such as brain-computer interfaces connected to verifiable digital IDs. We'll share users' intentions as well as protect vulnerable users from inappropriate content and contact. We might wonder how and to what end all this data is to be used. The answer is that it will be fed into and it will refine the cognitive network. Erickson's report states, knowledge and experience will be gathered both from humans and analytics algorithms and stored in a common knowledge base. These varying elements would then be used by a cognitive network to understand different situations, identify suitable corrective measures, and plan the best course of action for their implementation in the future. In other words, the data we feed through ICT systems will enable the network itself to optimize and control all that goes on within its reach. This is what's really meant by resilience. It's the capacity to implement a program of total risk management through an automated, always-on cyber physical control grid. The aim of SDG 9, with its backbone of 6G powered ICT, is then to, quote, bring all physical things into the realm of compute, unquote. With this vision in mind, let's revisit the WEF's article on the meaning of the 4IR. Almost a decade ago, the authors told us that its innovation program will result in the loss of control over our data and that that will impact our inner lives. But that's not all. The 4IR, they explain, will compel us to redefine our moral and ethical boundaries. And even back then, it was in the process of redefining what it means to be human. When we evaluate SDG 9 and observe its implementation, we ought to ask ourselves whether the rewards of locking ourselves into compliance with the sustainable development agenda are, in fact, worth the risks we assume when we attempt to build ourselves back better and to reset the heart and soul of human life. Thank you.